Now, last but not least, we have our indexes and our index entries. All right, so our index entries, we'll start off with those first. Index entry, you can make any, any word or phrase that you want uh, to be an index entry. That's completely up to you. And you can also choose what standards you would like to apply. Maybe you want title case or lowercase or always uppercase for your index entries. That, that's completely up to you. All author it cares about is what word or phrase you would like to be an index entry. The index entry then works very similar to a hyperlink object where it's almost like a topic-to-topic -topic link. You are associating your index entry with the topic object that contains that information that you want to point your users to. And an index entry can be associated with one topic object. It can be associated with five different topic objects. And what's going to happen when you publish to a Word or HTML, let's say Word first, you're going to get the page number that each one of those topics displays on uh, separated by a comma. And in HTML, you'll get a hyperlink to each one of those topic objects. All right, so an index entry is just simply a link between the index entry and the topic object. The index itself, very similar to a book, in that it is a container for all of the index entries that you would like to publish. All right, so your index entries actually go inside of your index object. And you can choose whether or not you want to build your own index entries, or you can just have author it automatically index your book for you. And if you go that route, what will happen is uh, you have two choices. You can build your index from topic headings of all the topics that appear in your book, or from the uh, text that is an anchor text that has a hyperlink assigned to it. So any text that has a hyperlink assigned to it would then also be used as an index entry. So you really have uh, three options for indexing your books. You can build your own index entries. You can have author it build your index using topic headings. Or you can have author it build your index using all of the anchor text that has a hyperlink applied to it. And you can have any combination of the three if you like. All right, so let's take a look at our indexes here. We open up my X1000 user guide. Go down to the bottom of the book. The index usually the last thing a user sees in a book, so it is the last object inside of my book's contents. Go ahead and double click on that to open it up. All right, so not a lot going on in the indexes other than what title, media object, and then what would you like to build your index from? So here's your three options here. Build your index from manual index entries you create, topic headings, or the anchor text that has hyperlinks assigned to it. All right, now if I go over to the index entries tab, here are all of the index entries that have been created manually for this particular book. All right, there's really only two components to an index entry, the word or the phrase, and then the topic object that the index entry is linking to. All right, so let me give myself some room on the screen here. Put these two side by side. And let's say that I want to create a new index entry. I'll hit this little new icon here. And let's give it a name, Time Travel. Now in the description, I'll put in the name of this index entry but it will automatically populate to each one of my output tabs as well. So this is the text that would display as the index entry when I go to publish. Now in the entry links area, I will click and drag in the topic objects that I would like to associate with this index entry. So let me find a topic that talks about time travel. 
let's go ahead and I'm going to drag in the X1000 description. I'm going to drag in the features. Now, let's see here, maybe unpacking my teleportation device. So, I'm associating these three topic objects with my time travel index entry. And when I publish in Word, I'll get the page number that each one of these topics displays on or in web output, I'll get the link to each one of these topics. Okay. Now, I had Acme storage cells selected, so Authorit assumed I wanted to make that a child index entry uh, in my index. So, as you can see, you can actually build uh, a hierarchy inside of your index. Let's say I don't want that to happen go ahead and promote that topic or that index entry and now it has been automatically alphabetized inside of the index. Let's go ahead and create another one here. Teleportation and in the entry links area I want to go ahead and multi-select all of these topics and drag them all in at the same time. And I can do that by using the shift or the control key. All right. So now I've just built a little grouping of index entries inside of my index. So as you can see, it's very similar to creating a hyperlink. You're just associating a word or a phrase with a topic object. So let's go ahead and save that now. And let's close my Word document. Let's publish this to Word. And I'll go ahead and publish this to our web output as well. All right, so in the meantime, we've got a question in the chat box. Does author have the capability to go through a book and determine what glossary entries are required, or do we need to know what terms to add? Uh, you will need to know what terms to add. Uh, it's the same story with your index entries. Uh, you're going to create your glossary terms, and you're going to create your index entries uh, manually. And your glossary terms will always have to exist as a level to underneath the glossary object itself. You should never have objects in your chapters or sections of your book that have the glossary term template assigned to them. Your glossary term should always appear uh, one level underneath of your glossary objects. And similarly, if you want to uh, index your book yourself, you're going to uh, want to create index entries uh, manually and save those inside of your index object. All right, so let's take a look here. Just going to do a big control end. Take a look at our index section. All right, so our index, same story. It is applying those alphabetic headings. Those are nothing more than a style that you can modify yourself. Notice, too, here when you've got an index entry associated with multiple topic objects that they are separated by a comma. Let's zoom a little bit. There we go. Now let's go down to time travel. All right. So we've got time travel here, and we associated that with a few topics. And then we had our sub-index entry here that was also associated with two objects. Let's try to get that on the same page so that it's easier to see. So you can create little hierarchies inside of your index as well. This page number automatically inserted by author it at the time of publication. You do not have to keep track of the page numbers that the topics display on. They're automatically refreshed every single time that you publish.